All right, part three. <laughs> some, some specifics here with uh, organic uh, uh, vegetable insect management. So, uh, you know, the, probably one of, one of the, the, the uh, largest acreage horticultural crops we have in the state is uh, sweet corn. The primary pest we have with uh, sweet corn, really the number one pest, is the corn earworm. So that, that is the most serious pest. Gets in the tip of the ear, starts tunneling, tunneling back from the tip of the ear and, and, and damaging the ear. Now, you know, if a home gardener's inclined, if they choose the right variety, one with uh, excellent tip coverage and tight husks, even if they have 100% infestation, all they have to do is cut off the tips of the ear. I mean, you don't even have to peel back the husk before you do that. You can just cut, cut them off. And uh, that, that is very, very effective. Um, the other thing I recommend is really not going with the late plantings, particularly if they want to can some of their, their corn and things like that. If they, if they have a, a, a main planting in their yard, try and plant that sometime between May 15th and June 1st, and that's going to avoid the bulk of the, the corn earworm problems. We also have uh, uh, mineral oil applications and, uh, and we've done some stuff with uh, banding of the ears and we're actually putting tight rubber bands around the, the tip of the ear. Uh, we found that they can be effective and reduce the corn earworm infestation of ears. The only issue we found with that is if we did it uh, within four days of pollen shed, we actually interfered with some of the pollen uh, and pollination of the ear. So we want to delay that until at least four days after uh, pollen shed. The other thing I had up here at the top had to do with wire worms and, and white grubs. And uh, really with, with sw sweet corn, you don't want to follow uh, established sod. So if someone's turning over established sod, you know, if they're planting uh, sweet corn in there, they, they can expect to get some significant losses uh, with that. By the way, with the uh, green June beetle, Japanese beetle, and the sap beetle, again, selecting good varieties that have excellent tip coverage is going to reduce damage and infestation by some of those pests. You don't want to get those varieties where the ear grows beyond the, uh, the husk leaves. That, that, that's an invitation for problems. With cucurbit crops, some of the things that uh, we can do there, and again, this emphasizes what Dr. Pfeiffer was mentioning, uh, really row covers. W with organic management of these crops, row covers, mechanical exclusion is going to be key for production of these crops. And what we're talking about that, uh, here is, you know, a, a, a low row cover system, you know, tobacco cloth or, or some sort of fine netting uh, held above the plants, usually uh, you need a minimum of uh, 12 to 18 inches the, above the plants. Uh, you need to secure it around the edges. Cucumber beetles are crafty little insects and they will literally try and crawl underneath the edges of the row cover. So you, they need to be secured, you know, burying the edges, putting uh, boards or anything to, to weight it down so they can't get underneath that. Now, th these crops are also completely dependent upon insects for pollination. Keep the row cover on all season, you'll see a bunch of aborted immature fruit underneath the row cover. So uh, once we start to see female flowers open, we need to pull the row covers back. And if you're not familiar with the female flowers, the male flowers just have a simple stalk underneath the flower that attaches to the flower. The female flower has that same simple stalk, but at the very end, it looks like there's a little immature version of, of that fruit right underneath the flowers. So when you start to see the, the uh, female flowers uh, uh, open, they need to pull back the row covers and allow insects to come in there, the bumblebees, the honeybees, the squash bees to come in there and pollinate that crop. We do recommend uh, that if they can, that they spray, uh, that that will improve uh, insect control. And again, uh, we have in trust, Pygenix and Surround. Uh, if they ever looked at the price of a bottle of Entrust, they'll find that they could probably get a share in a local CSA cheaper than they could uh, the, the price of the Entrust. Um, the, uh, the version that they have for homeowners, 
is called Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, um, but that is not organically approved. It's the same active ingredient. The problem is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew would ferment uh, except that they put in some, something in there to keep, keep that from fermenting and that's why it's not organically pr approved. But there is the same active ingredient that is, is available for homeowners and economical. Also with, with some of these the squashes, the pumpkins and the squashes, you know, bur burying some of the nodes of the plant uh, will cause some secondary rooting of those vines and help with things like squash vine borer and, and other pests. Uh, one thing we have found when we use row covers, about 50% of the time we end up with very, very serious aphid problems underneath the row cover. And so we do recommend that they purchase lady beetles. You can get online. We have a publication in the back of your booklet on where they can get lady beetles and they can release those. Um, and then uh, removing wilted plants. The wilted cucurbits actually produce more of a chemical called cucurbitacin, which is a feeding stimulant for the beetles. And so the sickest plants that have the most bacteria in them are favored by the beetles for feeding. So that they, they acquire a lot of the inoculum that they're going to use to, to uh, infect other plants. Coal crops. From an insect point of view, this, these are great crops to grow organically. We can do a very, very good job growing these with uh, not a lot of extra effort. Uh, we have a lot of worms. You notice that the first five I have there are uh, caterpillars that feed on the plants. Various types of caterpillars and actually there's more caterpillars than that. Uh, the BT sprays, the Bacillus thuringiensis sprays that are targeting caterpillars are very, very effective against all those caterpillars. So that, that, that is a good, a good uh, uh, resource for people growing it organically at home. The one thing I need to point out though is if you're going to spray these plants, they, they need to put in some sort of uh, sticker because these, uh, th these plants, when you spray them with uh, spray, the sprays beat up and, and roll off the plants. Harlequin bug is another very common home garden pest. We do not have good controls organically for stink bugs. We just do not have good controls. I recommend hand picking. Tomatoes and peppers, you know, tomatoes and, uh, can be very difficult to control, particularly from a, a disease management point of view. They're relatively easy to control from an insect management point of view, relative to disease management. I think our number one problem with uh, tomatoes and peppers at home would be stink bugs, stink bug damage to, to the tomatoes. And again, we do not have good controls for stink bugs. Hand picking, uh, very good, very good uh, uh, strategy, but it can be very difficult on large plants. Uh, we have done some w work with netting and row covers, and so if you had a support system for netting, uh, that, that would be a, a very good way of uh, managing the stink bugs. Corn earworm, yellow striped armyworm can be occasional pests. We don't see them every year, we don't see them every place. But if you do have a problem, uh, BT sprays can, can be very effective. I like BT sprays because they have a zero uh, day pre-harvest interval. And particularly for uh, home gardeners that may not uh, understand pre-harvest intervals very well, that's, that's a nice product for them. Leafy greens, again, some of the same things we were mentioning. They have uh, flea beetle problems, harlequin bug, you know, uh, various caterpillars and aphids that it can attack the leafy greens. Uh, row covers can be very effective against a lot of these uh, pests. BT sprays for the caterpillars, insecticidal soap or lady beetles. Uh, insecticidal soap, if they're, they're exposed, if their plants are underneath the row covers, I tend to think of lady beetles that you can release underneath those row covers. And then hand picking of harlequin bug. Lastly, uh, eggplant. And eggplant seems to be one of those crops that it's a magnet for insect problems. Uh, a lot of times it's very difficult to get eggplant established unless you control insects because you'll get flea beetles that will move in and keep the plant from uh, really becoming established. We do recommend row covers early for flea beetle control. Uh, once the plants really get established and start that active growing phase, uh, 
a lot of people can get by with insecticidal soap or pyganic for the aphids and, and the spider mites, white flies that, that are going to attack the, uh, the plants. Uh, once the plants get some size, they become much more tolerant of the flea beetle damage. And potatoes, Colorado potato beetle and flea beetles. Uh, I do recommend a, a, a thick straw mulch for potatoes. Uh, uh, research has shown reduced levels of Colorado potato beetle where people are using a heavy thick mulch. Uh, it, it, it provides a structural complexity there. It provides places for spiders and other natural enemies to live. Uh, right there you'll get a lot of homeowners that don't want mulch when they hear that it's increasing spiders, but it is a good thing. Uh, hand picking of Colorado potato beetles. I've, I've seen people uh, across the state, they'll go out early in the morning with a five gallon bucket of soapy water and they'll just walk down the road just knocking, knocking the plants uh, over a, a five gallon bucket. And so that's what we're talking about with the hand picking. And particularly early in the morning, the insects are slow, they're not going to move away. That, that can be very good control. Uh, row covers can be a, another potential tool. And then uh, entrust is very effective against Colorado potato beetle.